I have for you one of the most bizarre interviews I've looked at in a very, very long time uh, and some clips to show you from it. Carrie Lake is now running for Senate in Arizona. Lord help us. Um, and she sat down for an interview with Eric Trump, either right before her announcement for her Senate run or after uh, sometime in that time frame. And you put Carrie Lake and Eric Trump in the same room. Yikes. Yikes is going to happen, I can tell you. And indeed, yikes happened in this interview. So uh, we're going to get to, just as a preview, we're going to get to seemingly Eric Trump accusing or alluding to his dad engaging in unlawful child labor practices. I'll show you. You don't believe me, but I'll show you. Um, and also the most outrageous claim made by one of them about the amazingness of Donald Trump, which is so absurd and uh, some other things as well. But first, I want to show you Carrie Lake, who, by the way, is running for Senate. She still pretends she won the gubernatorial race back in 2022. Completely um, ridiculous. And you'll hear some of that talk in what I'm about to show you. This is the intro as presented on Carrie Lake's platform of what was to come in this interview. I've had many people tell me, don't fight the elections, that's taboo. You know, it's not taboo to go talk to your children about changing gender, but it's taboo to, to question your government when there's problems, when there's corruption. Yeah. Do you think that there's something changing a little bit there? I, I've said this to you before, I've said this to you a hundred times. I, you've been part of such a movement as a one-band army of, of something that so many people have run from. Voter fraud is real. You know, you'll, you'll never have me believe uh, that there wasn't serious fraud in the election. I would parallel Joe Biden around the country. He'd be in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. I'd be across the block somewhere, you know, Wilkes-Barre. He would have 20 people. I'd have a thousand. If it looks like a duck and acts like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's probably a damn duck, right? right. And, and we were seeing that all over the country. And then you were seeing in Pennsylvania, you find thousands of absentee ballots from military bases that are found in wow. creeks. And all of a sudden, at you know, a certain time, you know, 100% of the vote share would come in for Joe Biden, a massive dump. It is absolutely real. So for Carrie Lake, in introducing this interview to her audience, those are the moments that grab their attention. Just, to me, embarrassing. That's your explanation? You've been making these huge, gargantuous claims about our elections and claims that you better be able to substantiate because otherwise you are very dishonestly doing something super dangerous to people's perception of our democracy and its legitimacy. And his response to the question of how do you know the election was stolen is if it looks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, if it whatever sounds like a duck, it is a duck. Okay, those are words that doesn't provide any evidence any more than you had before. And his it quacks like a duck example is that Biden didn't have as big of crowds as he thinks Biden should have had. Number one, it was in the middle of a pandemic and Biden took precautions more seriously and also that's what we've been saying a lot of people are going to go to trump rallies and to trump son rallies and whoever because of this cultish like obsession not that going to a rally by itself is that but the reason why trump has this ability to uh, amass pretty big crowds often is because of the the coalescing around him like a cult leader that we're seeing within the republican party with joe biden People aren't obsessed with Joe Biden. They're just thinking, okay, he's better than Trump. I don't like Trump or I like Biden's policies. I'm going to vote for those. And so it is less likely that they would go with the Biden hat, a hat and cheer at a rally because that's not in line with why they're supporting him. It's not so much about him, but instead policies he stands for and often voting against the other candidate and just looking at the two and thinking who's better. And uh, so to me... That being a mic drop here in the intro, boom, it quacks like a duck because he can't get big crowds, is further exemplifying to a humiliating degree how little they really have when it comes to the subject. Then we get to a very, very strange moment from this interview. Eric Trump, I guess, I don't believe any of this, first of all, but if I believed it, he would be saying his dad engaged in unlawful uh, child labor practices with his own kids. It sounds like he's saying at age 11 and 12 or 10 and 11, something like that, Donald Trump had his kids working at construction sites for minimum wage. Tell me if you hear the same thing in the comments. Take a look at this. Okay, I'm four years old. Dad, what the hell is drinking? Like, I, I, <laughs> are you talking about like apple juice, right? Yeah. You know, like, what are drugs? I had no idea. But every single day, you know, drinking the drugs and smoking and 
um, he was strict. He was strict in his own way. Yeah. Um, he had high uh, expectations of us. Uh, he also made us work very, very hard. I was on construction sites when I was 11, 12 years old, you know, doing demo, breaking down walls, wow. concrete, That's sheet right. rock, uh, plumbing. I mean, stuff I literally still do for myself, you know, these days. So and, you uh, know how a building, you know how a, a skyscraper is built. You know how... We were uh, making minimum wage and, and he put us on those sites because he cared about work ethic. There was no free time. There was no nonsense. Mm -hmm. you know? So... He says, at 11 and 12 years old, working on construction sites, and then, a couple sentences later, minimum wage. Working hard, minimum wage, at 11 and 12 years old. Watch a little bit more of this on that. Now, you're going to work if you want a bike, you're going to go work for it. Um, and, and you know what? Conversely, it did two things. You didn't have time to screw around with drugs, unlike yeah. counterpart that we might have that when the exact opposite. You know, you start working at 6.30 in the morning on a construction site, you finish at 4, you're exhausted. The last thing you're going to do, you don't have time to go out and party, right? Mm -hmm. Surely, surely, you're not allowed to have 11 and 12 year olds <laughs> working from 6.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Yeah, I'm sure they would be tired after that at a construction site with their little hard hats on. Um, that sounds like what we worked hard to get rid of. <laughs> That's yikes. Now, again, this is funny because it's not true, obviously. Uh, can you imagine Don Jr. and Eric uh, Trump going, tink, tink, working hard, 6 a.m. to 4 p.m.? Okay, Eric. Um, then he, Carrie Lake asked Eric about the nightly routine at the Trump household. Father. Did you like sit at, uh, did you have dinner together every night and, and talk, or was he pretty busy working? Yeah. yeah, he was unconventional. I mean, we probably spent less time out there throwing baseballs around, right? Yeah. But I spent a tremendous amount of time in his office, and he's um, he's an unbelievable guy. And when he told us, when he goes, you know, kids, I'm going to run, I was the first one who said, listen, I'm, I'm by your side. I, I Listen, we knew we were going to get hit. Now I'm, the human's kicking in. And I'm thinking, maybe that explains a lot. If his response to, did you have dinner on a nightly basis with your father? And it's, well, dinner, I would spend a lot of time at his office. And the time I wasn't in his office as he was, what, over there working and saying, look, I'm on the cover of Time Magazine or something. Um, I'm, you know, Forbes richest, top 100 something richest person. And uh, when he's not doing that, he's sending them off to work for minimum wage at a construction site. I, I have a little bit more sympathy for Don Jr. and Eric, if any of that <laughs> was true. Okay, then... We get to the craziest part. We all know Trump. Okay, we've been familiar with this guy for a long time. They make claims about him that are ridiculous often. We even hear them sometimes say, he was the greatest president in American history. And, uh, okay, maybe you have your Washington and Lincoln, but Trump's, he's there. Maybe he's the best, is the type of language we'll hear. And then a little bit less crazy, they'll say, the greatest president in our lifetime. Still, pff, what are you talking about? But this is taking it to the next level. Carrie Lake says this. Let me read it to you and then I'll let you watch the clip. Quote, I believe he will go down as one of the greatest leaders in American history, in our lifetime, in the last decade, in all of human history. And I mean this. Yeah. I believe he will go down as one of the greatest leaders in all human history. Yeah, I agree. I really, really think he's that consequential. Cause he, cause he, and I'm still here, podcast listeners. Um, hmm. No, I, I don't know what commentary to add to that. Wrong, fact check, incorrect. Um, and actually, let me just give you one exhibit as to why I don't think that's gonna be the case. Very powerful light. And I think you said that hasn't been checked, but you're going to test it. And then I said, supposing you brought the light inside the body, you can, which you can do either through the skin or uh, in some other way. And I think you said you're going to test that, too. Sounds interesting. We'll the right, folks who could. right. And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or or almost a cleaning, because you see it gets on the lungs and it 
does a tremendous number of the lungs, so it'd be interesting to check that. So that you're going to have to use medical doctors with. But it sounds it sounds interesting to me. So we'll see. But the whole hey, also separate from that debacle, this is the guy. But they believe the lies, so obviously this won't impact them. But this is the guy who attempted to and is currently being prosecuted for using his position as president to overthrow a lawful election to keep himself in the White House, just taking our Constitution, shredding it. Which, by the way, he, we don't, we don't just have to watch his actions. He also wrote on True Social, let's terminate the Constitution. And that's the great leader. Not just in this current modern moment, but in Carrie Lake's view, and Eric Trump says, I agree, in all of human history, Something is wrong, if that's your analysis of uh, human history. Yikes. Make sure you are subscribed to the YouTube channel.